Elizabeth, what foods help a dog's thyroid? Which lecture covers that? So we did not cover thyroid disease um, on this topic, on this gut health summit, but this is also where there's what's really fascinating. And Dr. Ava Frick might have actually talked a little bit about this. I know um, with how she looks at the like hair tissue mineral analysis tests, there's different ratios we're looking at that actually will identify how the thyroid is functioning in the body. And it's not necessarily correlated to the blood level because blood levels will be different than what's in that hair test. And this is where that hair test can be very powerful and helpful at figuring out is the adrenal glands under stress? is that thyroid gland, are we actually getting that, like producing enough thyroid hormone and is it circulating around and getting to the, the organs where it needs to? So are we a fast, do we have too fast of a thyroid? Are we too slow of a thyroid? That's where seeing those results, what I can do is I can go, okay, I love standard process supplements. I use them for a lot of my patients. And this is where we can use glandulars. So for dogs, dogs tend to have, or are prone more towards a low thyroid state. So we hypothyroid, whereas cats can be a uh, hyperthyroid where they have too much thyroid, they get um, where not necessarily a neoplastic change in their thyroid, but it's pumping out too much thyroid hormone. That's why they lose weight. They get kind of hyperactive and crazy and where dogs can get fat, slow and sluggish and cold. That's what we tend to see when there's a thyroid issue. And so with the thyroid issues for dogs, what I tend to do is I use the standard process canine thyroid support. Um, and what's nice about that is we're using the glandulars, we're using organs, we're using whole foods that are naturally supporting the natural processes and the thyroid gland itself without adding like thyroxine, which is like the drug that we, we don't want to add that. So um, it's a nice safe supplement. But I always go off of what are my tests showing me? What is the pet showing me? Are they slow and sluggish and they need a little bit more support in that area? Maybe their adrenals um, aren't working too well. So remember, everything's interconnected. Um, I wouldn't feed thyroid gland. Um, so that's something that can potentially cause them to be hyperthyroid. That's where we see recalls in pet food, where unfortunately, if thyroid is in the like the raw food or it's accidentally added into the 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 pre-made foods or your homemade food, if you got that from like the butcher, um, that can cause adverse health reactions. But looking at, you know, your fur tissue test is a great one to assess. And then looking at the blood values too. And here's another test that Dr. Jean Dodds runs is a full thyroid panel. So it's specifically thyroid panel five that you can have your vet send blood work to her. Um, Michigan State also does a entire thyroid panel where we're looking at T4, free T3, free T, free T4. We're looking at TSH and we're also looking at the auto antibodies because there will be pets that are completely normal and everything. And so if you're only running a, like a T4, so that's what most veterinarians are checking on like annual blood work. And if that looks normal, they go, you're fine. And they just wait and they wait until like symptoms continue or that thyroid drops so low that now it's that it's low in the blood work. But if you're looking at the auto antibodies, you can start treating prior to that pet now having an issue. So it's an autoimmune disease. Once again, what's going on in the gut because everything's interconnected, but we can use these supplements to support your pet's body and hopefully help avoid putting them onto some of these medications. Or if we need to use uh, like a thyroxine supplement, then we're using really, really low doses um, to keep your pet functioning optimally. So hope that helps a little bit.